The world of AI generated art is very exciting and extremely fast moving as we get more and more different technologies it seems like every day. Previously I did a video on how to use Mid Journey, but today we're going to talk all things creating art with Stable Diffusion. Now if you want more information on what Stable Diffusion is exactly, there's an excellent blog post that's linked down in the video description. Check it out, it goes over more of the ins and outs of what Stable Diffusion is. But today we're going to talk about all how you can use it to create beautiful AI generated art. So currently there are two primary ways that you can create art using Stable Diffusion. You can either use an API downloaded on your local machine, or you can use an online client. Now there are currently a few different online clients that you can use, but the two main ones you're going to find are either Dream Studio or Write Sonic. Now if you do plan on running a local API on your machine, just know that it's pretty intensive on resources and will need a beefy computer in order to get really good quality images. Now, now, since the majority of people are probably going to be using an online client for this, we're going to be using Dream Studio for this entire tutorial, and you can find that at dreamstudio.ai. So let's check that out right now. So here you can see the user interface on Dream Studio. I'll quickly go through all the different areas and everything that you really need to know, just for the very basics. Again, if you're looking for more advanced, in-depth things, check that blog article down in the link below. So up here first, this is the Generate tab where you're going to be generating images. Over here to the right is the Edit tab. That's where you're going to edit your images. Now over here is the style tab. You can see that there are 16 different styles that you can choose from. And this is what's gonna really set the tone for the type of artwork that you're creating. And you can choose whichever one works for you. The prompt here is where you write in what you want it to create. You can use this negative prompt here if you wanna add in things that you want it to avoid. So if there's something specific that you don't wanna be in the artwork, you can type it in right here. Upload image, this is where you can upload an image on your own for it to generate art based off of. Down here in your settings tab, you have your image aspect ratio. You can set this to be whatever you want and your image count is how many images it'll generate generate when you click the generate button. Then we have a series of advanced options. If you want it to show, just click the little eye logo icon here. And then you can see we can set a specific width and height. You can determine the prompt strength. And this determines how much of the image will portray your prompts. The generation steps are how many steps that it'll go through when it creates your image. By default, it's 50. You can go anywhere from one to hundred. The more steps, generally the higher quality the image is gonna be. So the seed control here, this will base the original seed that the images are gonna generate off of. You can go anywhere from one to 4.3 million. And if you use a seed close to the previous seed you used, the images will be pretty similar to each other. And the dream button here, that's what you click when you want it to create images. Since it's Dream Studio, you dream of the image. Now, when you're creating images with Dream Studio, to get the optimal results, you wanna think of this in three different parts. The three main parts of an image are gonna be the frame, the subject, and the style. The frame determines the composition of the picture itself. The subject is the main thing that you want the image to be of, and the style will specify whatever specific characteristics you want for the image. So here we'll have it generate golden doodle puppies in a photorealistic over the shoulder view, and I'll just have it dream that and generate the images for us. Now a good rule of thumb when using Stable Diffusion to create art is to be as specific as you can be. If you're very generic and vague, it's gonna kind of just run wild and do what it wants, but if you have an exact idea in your brain what you want, typing that all in is very smart and will generate better images for you. In the blog article I mentioned before, there's an awesome list of different keywords you might wanna use but some examples of this would be instead of just the golden doodle that we did, we'll say an image of a golden doodle in a photorealistic over the shoulder view, add detailed grass, a lake and mountains in the foreground, add cinematic lighting, high detail and sharp focus. We'll just kind of see what it does with that. So we'll generate that. We'll do four images again. And now you can see that it took some of the stuff that we talked about having grass, a lake, mountains in the foregrounds, cinematic lighting. This one even added a picture frame. That's kind of cool. I like that. Now you can see the differences if we want to change the style here. Let's say instead of doing the enhance, we want to do like photographic. Let's dream that and see the difference of this one. Now you can see the huge difference. It's starting to create something very specific to exactly what I told it to do. Based on the first prompt, it didn't know exactly what I was looking for, but if I wanted the dog on the lake, just start typing in that stuff. Now, if you notice that it's generating stuff that you don't want it to have, like extra limbs in a picture for some instance, or like if I didn't want the picture frame down here that it made, in the negative prompt, that's exactly when you type in those things. So if you want it to not have anything blurry or out of focus, or if like in this lake scene, if there were like children playing and I didn't want those, I could say no children, things like that. That's what the negative prompt is for. And just for fun, we'll check out here from the generation steps, we'll see the difference between 50 and 100. So I'll have it dream this up with 100 different steps, and then we can see the difference between that. Now you can see it's just a little more detailed, very photorealistic. I mean, in some of these, you would almost mistake them for photos. And you can see you can actually make some very 
fantastic, great looking art with Stable Diffusion. Now that is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to using Dream Studio and Stable Diffusion as a whole. The possibilities are almost limitless. Uh, as you can see, we got some excellent looking results just from very little time. So if you have an exact idea of what you're looking for, just remember the big things is being very specific. Again, check out the blog article in the link below. There are a lot of different tips and it goes into more advanced steps and details. This again was just the very basics to get you started. But if you want to go even deeper, check out that blog article. Thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Before you go though, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot more awesome content coming out, especially when it comes to AI tools. So if you're looking for more tutorials and some of the best tools out there, make sure you follow the channel and we'll see you in the next video.